Freedom Radio Hour. Live on Capital Radio 91.6 FM. All right, all right, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Freedom Radio. Radio Hour. I'm your host, DJ Adam Cruz, and I have my fantastic co-host. What up, beautiful people? Eddie Nicholas here. Thank you for joining us at 91.6 FM, the heartbeat of Sudan, freedomradiohour.com. I'm here sitting up here with Adam, and we have some wonderful, fantastic things to share with you today. What are we going to be kicking it off with, Adam? Uh, We have so much news. But first, let us uh, let our viewers and our listeners know that the Freedom Radio Hour is here, not only giving you fantastic music, but we're here to be your number one source for music, business news, and trends from around the globe. Tonight, we are talking about Frank Ocean and the politics of going number one tonight. Very interesting episode, so keep your eyes and ears peeled for this entire episode. So first out the gate, uh, last time we were talking, we were trying to break down the myth of going to number one. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to figure out how does one go to number one, say on the billboard charts or or something like that. You know, how do you get to number one? Um, And so we were I was doing the research for the show Mm -hmm. and I covered sort of two things in once that I thought we should cover. The first thing is I noticed that. when it came to Frank Ocean, now let me give you a little backstory. Frank Ocean, for those that don't know, is a uh, like an R&B singer. Um, he has been making inroads. He was he wrote on Beyonce's latest album and he performed on them. So he's been doing his thing for a while. Um, and so Frank Ocean had a deal with Def Jam. That was his label to mm-hmm. fulfill a certain number of albums to do a, a certain number of uh, tracks for him. Um, and so what we understand now is allegedly. His relationship with Def Jam had been dwindling over the years. Uh, uh, this summer, they uh, allegedly Billboard spent upwards of $2 million uh, for the recording cost for what was dubbed uh, Boys Don't Cry, the name of uh, Frank Ocean's upcoming LP mm-hmm. over the summer. That's what they were saying. Um, and what happened was when, they, when that amount came out and that they spent so much money um, and Frank Ocean had an album to release for the label. What he did was this. The album that he ended up re- uh, releasing on August 19th was entitled Endless. It was only a visual album. Now, you know, have, have you watched visible visual albums yet? No. Do you know what it is? Well, I guess it's music that plays and it visually shows the music. Or, well, or... Think of, it's basically this. It's basically um, music videos. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, several of them that make a journey. You know, think like Michael oh, Jackson back okay, in the day okay, or Janet. Okay, okay, You know, it's like that. But now the the artists are releasing. Uh, R. Kelly. Okay. Yeah, they all do. Yes, that Trapped in the Closet. All that yes, was the okay. same idea, which is create a visual album where you have to watch it all the way through mm-hmm. and you get to see it and hear it at the same time. And so for to fulfill his obligation and end his contractual agreements with Def Jam, on August 19th, Ocean releases Endless, this visual album, okay? Um, The next day, August 20th, Frank Ocean releases another album. Mm -hmm. The album is called Blonde. So what ended up happening is this. He ends his deal with Def Jam, and then very next day, he releases Blonde. Mm -hmm. So now what they're trying to do is is figure out, one, is there a lawsuit pending? Because, you know, usually when you sign a deal with a label, you can't just end your agreement and then go off pitter-patter the very next moment. There's usually a clause that prohibits you from working uh, for a certain number of Mm -hmm. time after the release of the project. Mm -hmm. And they do that so that they can maximize their efforts and profits around a centralized album without it being confusing to the consumer to then be competing and buying another mm-hmm. product. Okay, there's usually a clause in there. The other thing that you usually find is what's called uh, minimum delivery clauses. That's a, f- a fancy way of saying that you have certain uh, number of albums to deliver at a certain amount of time, and they all have to be uh, separated by a certain number of, of time uh, in order for it to be uh, a fulfillment. Mm-hmm. So anyway, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to figure out what, why Frank Ocean did this and what it meant for the music business. And is this a trend that we're going to see coming up? Where? On 91.6 FM, the heartbeat of today. Freedom Radio Hour, y'all. Come right back. Freedom Radio Hour. Live on Capital Radio 91.6 FM. What up, beautiful people? Eddie Nicholas here, and I'm so glad that you came back. 
to join us on 91.6 FM Freedom Radio Hour.com, the heartbeat of Sedan. I'm sitting up here and I'm rocking out with my partner, Mr. Adam Cruz, and we're live in direct right here on the Freedom Radio Hour, live on Capital Radio and on the web at dwildmusicradio.com. Before we broke, Eddie, we were talking about this politics, the yes. politics, politics. So, uh, Frank Ocean, an RB singer who has uh, become quite known, uh, for writing and performing mm-hmm. really good records and also very recently came out of the closet. So that sort of added added another, another layer mm-hmm. to his, uh, uh, what do you and call you it, public know, life, and, and, publicity, and if you will. And I'm going to say, I, you, when you said Frank Ocean, it rung no bells to me. <laughs> well, you're not, uh, do you follow R&B like that? No. Okay, so That's that would why. probably, probably mm-hmm. why. But he's written for and performed on, on Beyonce's records. Um, and he has these albums that he's had out okay. through, uh, through his tenure, throughout his tenure at Def Jam. Okay. Uh, so last we broke, we were talking about Frank Ocean's uh, plan that he devised mm-hmm. to get out of his contract. Well, fulfill his obligation to then get out of his contract at Def Jam. What Frank Ocean did on August 19th was release Endless through Def Jam. It ended his contractual agreement because he had one album left. Um, that was done on August 19th. It was released only as a visual album. Mm-hmm. The next day, August 20th, Ocean releases another album entitled Blonde. It's a regular album, meaning it's not a visual album. This all becomes relevant in a, in a minute. So the next day, uh, when he releases Frank Ocean's Blonde, it created such a buzz and stir around the industry for several reasons. One, industry insiders were debating over mm-hmm. the legalities of such a move. Of him doing because two up things in, Yeah, because you've never had that. Mm-hmm. You've never, usually, you're in a co- controlled composition clause. That means while we record and even after the release of the project, you can't work with other people nor release other product. Uh, mm-hmm. product. Also, uh, there was questions as to whether Frank Ocean had in his agreement a uh, minimum delivery clause, which essentially would mean the blonde release would be a breach because mm-hmm. usually minimum delivery Delivery clauses include language that uh, secures them to be able to maximize the profit of a new release for a certain amount of time before you can then release something mm-hmm. else. So in other words, it would be six months to a year or... Yeah, which you understand totally uh-huh. as a business because if you if we released, um, say, one time mm-hmm. and then the very next day we released You Left Me, the new remixes, that would be a problem because what are the consumers about to buy? Mm-hmm. What do you want them to buy? The one or the other. Why are you not packaging them together if that's mm-hmm. what you wanted people to do? There's a lot of questions. Anyway, the other big thing was that uh, Blonde, the record, the second album, was released independently on Apple Music exclusively. So what he did was, this is what the, the report is saying. The reports are saying that Ocean took, allegedly, his advance from Apple Music, because now he's independent, let's say, And he took that money and paid off the debts, the recoupable claims that Def Jam would have had for his Endless album. He paid it off. Okay. So that was over $2 million. They're saying by him paying it off and fulfilling his contractual agreement that, uh, legally speaking, they aren't able to file a claim against uh, Ocean's Blonde's release. Mm -hmm. This was done through Apple Music, like I said. The other thing that was really, there's a few things that are interesting. In terms of the critics, by and large, they're saying endless, they're panning as a, as critics. Uh, Blonde, they're saying, is a much more incredible album. Mm-hmm. You know, art is very um, subjective. subjective. Exactly. So it's, who's to say which is better or not? But if there is there has become a consensus that the one album is better than the other, which lends you to believe, like, did he deliver the bad album mm-hmm. for Def Jam in favor of the great album for himself? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that becomes one item in our discussion tonight. But the other one I want to talk about, because last we broke, you were saying, we need to figure out how does one go to number one? And, the, and I found out through researching Frank Ocean's story that... Um, there's some very interesting things that the music industry has done. Uh, in particular, that Blonde release is now considered number one. It debuted at number one on the Billboard charts. Endless, a visual album, is not eligible. Charting. Oh, not eligible. It's not eligible. The Endless one that came out on Def Jam is not eligible to be charted on Billboard. Why? Because it was released only as a visual album. Remember we said before we broke that a visual album is basically music videos mm-hmm. for every song in the project and they put it out as like a movie, you know, a musical movie, if you will. 
Um, but because Ocean didn't release it as a regular physical album, um, it it didn't it, it meant it wasn't eligible to be charted. Mm -hmm. So Blonde debuts at number one, whereas the one the, the one that was released the day before doesn't chart at all. But doesn't that label Def Jam still has the option to put that into a digital format as a record release, which I would think they would be smart enough to do. You know, they're probably going to let this ride the wave and then boom, drop it out as a uh, as a release with all the digital stuff along with the visual. That's how they're going. <laughs> they I, I feel you. They probably are going to do something like that. But I do feel like a few things have happened. They lost the first bite. Yes, yes, they did, but they're going to get it on the second and the third. <laughs> Trust me, they're going to find a way to recoup that. Even though he paid them that money, record labels and executives, as we know, we sit many of them behind these little desks and they find ways how to kind of get in to get their little two cents or three cents or four cents. So they're always going to be sitting at the table trying to come up with some type of way where they can siphon on, which leads back to what I think we're getting ready to talk about with the counting of how these what streams and yes. all of this stuff So now we're in. At, So the Frank Ocean story, great segue, mm -hmm. segue, leads us to the next item on our list, which is how do you get to number one? So when we're figuring out Frank Ocean, so he has this endless album that comes out for mm -hmm. Def Jam. The next day, he releases Blonde. Endless is released as a visual album, therefore killing its chances for being charted because Billboard does not chart visual mm -hmm. albums at the moment. They chart physical albums or download albums, mm -hmm. right? So when Blonde debuts at number one, of course, the, everyone wants to see the math. Now, back in the day, number one used to mean how many records you sold. So mm -hmm. you went to the store, you went to the register, they scanned it, boop. And it was and a that physical was, count. Nielsen, yep, Nielsen sound scan took track every time a purchase happened. But in the advent of digital and streaming, that all that math has been switched up. It's time to take one more break. When we come back, we're gonna break down what that math is so you can be well informed. And also to decide for yourself, what does it mean to go number one in this day and age? Where? Uh, 91.6 FM, FreedomRadioHour.com. <laughs> I'll see you in a minute. Freedom Radio Hour. And we're back live on Capital Radio, 91.6 FM, the heartbeat of Sudan. And on the web at DWildMusicRadio.com. That's right. You're deep, deep in the zone right here on the Freedom Radio Hour, where you're number one source for music, business news, and trends from around the globe. Right now, we're diving deep into the politics of going yes. number one. So if you ever aspired, if you're a music uh, producer, uh, a songwriter, a singer, a performer, uh, or, or even a music enthusiast, the Freedom Radio Hour is your show to tune into. Tonight, we're trying to break down if you were an aspiring artist and you're trying to go number one on the charts, especially when we're talking about the biggest chart system that exists, at least in the U.S., Billboard, how does one get to number one? So what, what we discovered in our reporting over Frank Ocean, he's an R&B singer that devised a plan to get out of his contractual obligations to his label Def Jam and begin to release product independently one day from the next. Mm -hmm. And he is shaking up the music industry because there are certain rules to this. See, this whole system that's been put in place by music industry insiders, by the way, really make it so that the music business makes the bulk of the money. I mean, after all, we are talking about private enterprises here. We are talking about uh, labels that want to make as much money as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. So they're devising new ways and reinventing what we know as regular math to come up with these new schemes to make most of the dollar. So in Frank Ocean's case, arguably he won up the music industry by releasing one product one day from the next, mm -hmm. literally. And one became uh, eligible for charting on Billboard, the blonde release that he released independently. That debuted at number one. So it opened up a whole can of worms in terms of a discussion. So you were saying, how do we go to number one? Well, in the case of Frank Ocean, let's see how this happened, where he debuted on Billboard as, as number one. Especially, you know, when you, you said it, you said something in, in that commentary right there in regards to the new man. It is. <laughs> because how, what, what else do you call this? And, 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 you know, parents, you know, we have seen some of this new math that's coming to, you know, be taught in public school now. So yes. it may have something to do with why they're Perhaps. teaching in these kids in these calculations. <laughs> but go ahead, Adam. This new math. So in the case of what it used to be, in order to become get number one, that means quite simply. You had to sell X amount of 
Do, blah, yeah, blah, uh, blah. units. These uh-huh. are units, usually CDs. They're all the formats, mm-hmm. vinyl, cassette tapes, and all whatever mm-hmm. throughout history, right? X amount of units get you platinum, gold, to silver. Right. In the U.S., 500,000 was gold. Um, then uh, a, a million was a, was a platinum. platinum mm-hmm. And then you go multi-platinum from then on, for example. Um, but now, in the advent of digital downloads and streaming, that's Nielsen's had a tough time on how to... To struggle with tracking this, and also let's not let's be honest here. The the labels have an incentive here to continue to try to inflate the the consumption of music because uh, after all, it does perpetuate their businesses. Mm-hmm. If they can go back to their shareholders and say consumption of our products are at an all time high. Mm-hmm. So what they did was this: they know we know that you used to count vinyl and CD, and that still happens, right? But now with digital, you count digital download units. There's what's called the the album download. That's all the tracks within the album. Then there's individual download mm-hmm. tracks. That's easy enough to know. But now with streaming, how do you count that in the in the advent of charting and in, in the terms of charting? So how do we figure this out? Well, we, you and I, Eddie, did not figure this out. But someone in a boardroom somewhere in the music business got up in somebody's boardroom to decide how are we going to figure mm-hmm. this out because we need to uh, inflate these numbers or at least track streaming counts. In the case of Frank Ocean, his Blonde album was digitally downloaded 232,000 times. So Which though, still would not have translated into millions of dollars in his bank account. Right, because in, if we're talking about back in the day counting, he wouldn't have even gotten to gold. Exactly. Right? So, But in the digital world, he down, his product was downloaded 232,000 times. So they Billboard counts that as 232,000 units. Mm-hmm. Um, but now with streaming, they're counting that too. You see, Frank Ocean, while he might have only uh, enjoyed 232 downloads of his album... His stream count is 65 million. Let me say that again. So the industry has reported, or all reports have reported that the product has been downloaded 232,000 times, but has been streamed 65 million times. So you could start to see why industry insiders would want to capitalize on tracking that because that's content that's being listened to, even though it's not being downloaded. Mm -hmm. So... What they did was in the industry was to take that number and divide it by 1500. I don't know where that amount came from. Would that be the average price of an album? 1500 what? You know, $15, $15 but $15 equates oh, 1500 units. Listen, now you're trying to now you're trying to sound yes, now you're trying to apply the new math. Exactly right. <laughs> But for, for this case, it was really, really crazy. So somehow they divided 65 million, 65 million divided by 1500 equals this amount that, that, that they then added to this 232,000 to equal, he was number one. Now, I can live with content being said, he has been the most number one stream song. Right, but that's not what they're doing. But that's not what they're saying. No, they're, they're trying because to because these number one stream songs. They're going to take that like he done sold these records. Well, not only that, they have they've been coined the term for it. It's called equivalent download. Oh unit. yes, equivalent. Uh, so it used to be it? just a download unit, two hundred thirty-two thousand, right? Now it's download equivalent. So an equivalent relates to a sale, to a stream, to a stream. The equivalent relates to a math problem. Okay, so 65 million divided by, by, by 1,500 mm-hmm. equals this math. This uh, ma- math this, amount. This right. mythical number that some folks are sitting up getting paid X amount of buku money. We need to go into a different business. I'm telling you. <laughs> well, the other thing, too, is, I mean, let's be clear. Now Frank Ocean has basically uh, used and he leveraged his own brand and his own reputation to really catapult this thing. I mean, they, mm-hmm. think about it. Def Chan can't sue because they, 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 they have they to recoup because he paid it off. And now he fulfilled his obligation with the label. I mean, minus these two clauses I mentioned to you, this uh, minimum delivery clause and a control composition clause, barring that these two things aren't problematic for Ocean's team, mm-hmm. he's going to be able to move on forward as an independent artist. And he wouldn't got he would have gotten the most leg up that we've seen in decades. Because I've, I've told you, the new math applies not just now, but back then too. Because uh, music industry folks have been getting over in terms of how to pay and how much to pay and win for a very long time. Now, and- when we w- let's be clear, when we say music industry folks, we're talking about the heads of these companies. 
and the ones that have to report the shareholders um individuals that might not have a connection with the music per se but they are on the back end of the business end of getting money exactly and more to the point that when we talk about this 1500 mysterious amount that they divide 65 million from these are the people that are at that table mm -hmm. making that choice. So it's not the worker person that the is artist. in the system spitting mm -hmm. out the statement and therefore that's the problem. No, it's the head person mm -hmm. that Eddie's talking about that decides, okay, I think we'll divide it by say 1500. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll do it. And who said the number couldn't have been seven? You exactly. Know, any, any any arbitrary number that they right. decide to pick or, up out the Or sky. more simply, to your earlier point, which is why couldn't you just say he garnered 232,000 units sold, downloaded, mm -hmm. and then he was streamed 65 million times? Mm -hmm. End. End. As opposed to trying to add because take, then, you know, take away it mm -hmm. in order to because create some that, point. Then that, then that 65,000 listen to streams, yeah, he was six, he was listened to 65 million times. Well, hopefully out of those 65 million streams, he will get some more digital downloads. Well, let me tell you. Very but it don't Think about like it like that. this, and this will probably <laughs> answer the question. Think about it like this. If you have to go back to your shareholders, uh -huh. would you rather tell them that Frank Ocean debuted at number one with over a million sold? Or would you rather tell them he only sold 232,000? But again, if I'm listening to that, doesn't how does if he if he was listened to one million to six whatever times, right? You know, he was how was that equating to money in my pocket? Well, be, well, we know that you're paid a fraction of a penny per stream. Mm. I remember in, the, in our episodes before we talked about rapper Nelly's Spin Magazine mm -hmm. trying to get his fans to stream his biggest hit "Hot in Here" a certain number mm -hmm. of times, so it would garner him enough royalty money to pay off the tax debt he owes. So there is a connection with pennies right. to a stream. Right. I'm not gonna say dollars. I'm gonna no. say pennies to a stream. So out of that 65 million times. 0.04% of a penny <laughs> he made X amount of thousands of dollars. You know, come on now. Well, that's all the time we have today, but yes. we're going we're gonna to talk more about all of this. This is our new math segment for tonight, but yes. we're going to be breaking down more about why are this why is this royalty game so confusing? But I think you're getting some of the answers, which is you let the powers that be decide. They'll come up with some very tricky, ricky math. To put more money in their pockets. Because they do have shareholders to answer mm -hmm. to. That's really the bottom line. That's all the time we have. Thank you so much for tuning into the Freedom Radio Hour. Uh, definitely check out EddieNicholas.com. He has a You Left Me re remixes out. One Time is out. All available from his store, as well as DJAdamCruz.com for all of my product, including my latest album, Freedom. And I hope you guys have a great weekend and a great week ahead. We'll see you next time. Capital Radio, 91.6 FM, and oh, DWaldMusicRadio.com. Beat of the dance. Boom, 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 boom. Peace and love. Peace.